Let's talk to our chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons, who joins us now on the programme. Rob, I have to say, um, here we go again then, Rob. The president asking someone else once again to try to form a government. Yeah, I would hate to be an Israeli elector. This just seems to go on and on and on. It's all about the, the mathematics, Stuart, here. You know, after the March election, uh, Likud, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's party, was by some considerable distance the largest party. He got 30 seats uh, in the 120-seat Knesset. But uh, that's not enough to form a government. You need a majority, uh, 61. So the problem for him was how could he get from the 30 seats of his own party to 61 to form a coalition? Uh, and it's proved just not possible. He managed to put together 52, but the only way he could get from 52 to 61 was to bring in you know, so, some of the other non-committed parties. One of them uh, was Yamina, right wing, uh, ideologically, ideologically quite closely aligned with Likud, uh, but Yamina alone was not enough. He needed, in addition, the United Arab Party, which is an Islamist party. Uh, and for the other right-wing religious members of his coalition, uh, it was simply too much. There was no way uh, that they were going to agree to form a coalition with Netanyahu at the head, which would also include an Islamist party. So that's really where it all crumbled for him. So now it... President Rivlin is going to, it appears at least, is going to turn to uh, the next largest party, uh, Yair, uh, Yair Shatid, led by Yair Lapid. He got 17 seats. On paper at the moment, it's in a position to get about 57. Uh, but the kingmaker, again, is likely to be Naftali Bennett uh, of Yamina. Uh, the sticking point, again, will be the fact that inside this coalition, which is an anything but Netanyahu coalition in effect, there is a, 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 an Arab joint list which Bennett is certainly opposed to. So quite clearly, if he's going to be brought on board, he's going to demand a lot in this new government. He'll certainly want to be either the, the prime minister or, or a rota rotating prime minister. He will drive a very hard bargain. It's not clear at this stage uh, whether the, wh whether uh, Yair Lapid, Yesh Yeshatid, its leader, is prepared to make that sort of concession. Rob, what do you think of the worldwide um, implications of, of all this? I mean, Netanyahu has been in power for 12 years. Obviously, he's uh, really um, left his indelible mark, if you like, on Israeli foreign policy. A lot of disagreements with the US yeah. as well. Could we see a shift in Israeli foreign policy that could uh, bring together some of those uh, difficult uh, relationships? We could, Stuart, yes, but it's, you know, it's difficult to predict how this is going to move. You know, there is still the possibility uh, that Benjamin Netanyahu will pull yet another rabbit out of his hat and some way fi find a way to stay on as prime minister. Nobody's excluding that possibility at the moment because he's done it so many times before. Uh, but it does look that we're likely to see a shift. You know, over the last four years, of course, Netanyahu, who was out of sync with the previous U.S. administration, administration of Barack Obama, found himself pretty much in sync uh, with, with Donald Trump. You know, on Iran, they saw eye to eye. Uh, you know, Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He moved the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. You know, the, seat, the, the two the countries seem to be moving pretty long, pretty much along the same paths. You know, when uh, Israel assassinated uh, members of leading figures in the Iranian nuclear program. The United States under Donald Trump was perfectly happy about it. You know, when uh, Israel hacked into nuclear facilities in Iran, the United States was happy about it. You know, but that has quite clearly changed uh, with Joe Biden at the head. So the danger has, has, has arisen that Israel could, uh, could now, in the years ahead under Joe Biden, find itself completely out of sync unless it finds itself uh, with a new leadership uh, which can move in a direction at least more in tune with that of the United States. If uh, a, a new government is formed of this anything but Netanyahu coalition, it does seem likely uh, that Israel will start to shift away from the position of extreme hostility towards I Iran. It's not going to change its position. It still will regard Iran as the enemy. Uh, but, you know, it, it's unlikely that it'll go uh, 
on independent uh, actions against Iran without the approval of the United States. For instance, it will not probably uh, take the sort of action that was taken recently at the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran, which was closed down because of uh, uh, an Israeli uh, underground op operation at the very moment that the U.S. Defense Secretary, uh, Lloyd Austin, was in, was in Israel. You know, something that the United States most definitely did not want at that point, just a couple of days before it was to begin negotiations on the Iranian nuclear program uh, on whether or not the United States would come back into it, you know, follow, following Donald Trump. You know, so the, the, there is at the moment this sort of moment where the two countries are a little bit out of sync. It's possible, you know, if, if a new government is elected, a new coalition, that the two countries could come back together in sync and we will see a shift in Israeli foreign policy. Rob, thanks very much. Rob Parsons, our chief foreign editor on France 24.